So it all started as just golf balls. And, um, you know, fast forward a little bit, we got a couple customers, um, wasn't growing as fast as I wanted. So I, I ended up offering, do you just want golf balls or do you want golf balls plus a mystery product? This is yet another episode of Form Your Own Pack, the Founders Pack podcast. My guest today is Drew Amato from Mullybox. And Drew, how are you doing today? I'm good. I'm good. Thanks for having me on. No problem. So for people that don't know, who is Drew and what is Mullybox? So I am uh, the co-founder of Mullybox. Um, yeah, I'm, I, I kind of run the day-to-day -day operations. I'm, I'm the CEO if, if uh, you know, we're going to put a title on it. But, um, you know, we've got a team of about four guys all building Mullybox on nights and weekends. So keeps us, uh, keeps us really busy. Um, Mullybox has been around for about four years now. And we're a subscription box for golfers. So mm -hmm. you're probably familiar with uh, Dollar Shave Club or BarkBox, um, you know, kind of like that, but if it were for golf stuff instead of uh, like bark boxes for dog toys. Got it. Um, so, you know, what we really focus on is delivering uh, golfers essentials, like their balls and tees, um, gloves, things like that. And then also curating a few, um, you know, new accessories to try out some apparel things. And we try to be kind of a one-stop shop for, for all your golf stuff. Awesome. All right. So, um, so it started four years ago. What was kind of the inspiration or motivation for starting this? So, you know, it's, it's, a, I, I noticed another company called Dollar Shave Club, um, which was, you know, gaining a lot of steam. I think it was about four years ago, maybe five years ago when their, their viral commercial came out. I got and, bad news uh, for you. It might be 10. I don't know. <laughs> is it really that long ago? I, I'm wondering, yeah. I'm going to check, but you keep going. <laughs> Okay, well, maybe I noticed it 10 years and it took me five years to realize it came no, out. You know what it, it, it might have been 2011. Is that right? 2011 would be wow. I think nine might. years ago. Let's see. Let's see if it's true, but keep Hi, going. I'm Mike. Well, some, there's Mike. Oh, there we go. 2012. Can you believe that? It's been 10 years. 2012. It's been 10 years since. Everybody remembers came this out. commercial, right? Yes. It was, it was, it was huge. I mean, I remember. It's, it almost seemed to start like this silly viral ad stuff that was going around. Um, but yeah, so I mean, Dollar Shave Club was an inspiration for me. Um, I had always been entrepreneurial. I noticed they built a fun brand. They were doing some, a new business model um, that was really interesting. So I was looking for opportunities um, that were kind of similar to Dollar Shave Club. So I started to think, well, what do they do? They make it easy for people to get their shaving stuff. No one likes to go and get a new razor. No one likes using an old razor. So um, what's another instance where you need a replenishment of your essentials? So I was golfing and, and uh, more often than I'd like to admit, I started to notice that I was running out of golf balls while I was on the course. So I said, aha, there we go. Um, let's start a golf ball subscription company. So it all started as just golf balls. And, um, you know, fast forward a little bit, we got a couple customers, um, wasn't growing as fast as I wanted. So I, I ended up offering, do you just want golf balls or do you want golf balls plus a mystery product? Okay. And like 90% of the people were signing up for that. So that's kind of how it turned into Molly box. And then how did you find your first customer? Facebook ads. Facebook ads. Yeah. Right? Yeah, really simply. I mean, I was just running $20 a day ads, um, offering, get your first box for a dollar. Someone signed up, actually signed up before I even had inventory. So that was fun. Oh, wow. Um, <laughs> yeah. So I found, you know, scrambled and shipped out my first box. And uh, yeah, it's kind of how we ran the business for two to three years was just Facebook ads. Um, until now, as you know, iOS update, we've had to diversify a little, but yeah, it feels uh, yeah, like Facebook the whole ads. platform is blown up because of that <laughs> one thing. It's like the apocalypse yeah. over there or something. Yeah, I honestly, um, 
we have currently 0% of our ad spend going to Facebook right now, wow. which last year at this time, it was probably 100%. Interesting. So, so I've slowly gone, you know, I, I built a, a little spreadsheet where I track, you know, percent of ad spend where and what's our row as. And uh, slowly over time, it's gone up in TikTok and down in Facebook. So isn't that interesting how TikTok is such an effective platform? So it's, it's kind I of wonder, yeah, it almost, it almost feels like it's, um, you know, and, and you're in, in the space too, and talk to a ton of founders. And I'm curious if you're hearing that same success from others and, you know, um, almost seems like they have more access to data than Facebook does. Well, that's the, that's the scary part because I think that finally, even the current government administration said, this is spyware. <laughs> Yeah. So it's effective for advertisers and maybe for <laughs> entities. <laughs> yeah. Well, but you know, you know, might as well ride it while it lasts. Yeah. Well, you know what though? I think the thing about it, and I, I haven't really spent a lot of time on there, and I'm not an expert in this, but it feels like Facebook got stingy, where they just wanted to monetize everything and they couldn't let that grip go. So you had no everything you got was paid or nothing. <laughs> yeah. Now it's just nothing, nothing. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it was, it was almost like they had just such a monopoly on ad spend that they didn't really, customer service was bad, talking about advertiser customer service. Oh. And after the iOS update, they have people constantly reaching out to me now, asking, can we get on a call? Can we start a weekly call to work on your ad spend? Yeah. So you can tell there's something up over there. There's something going on there. And that, I wonder, I wonder if Instagram is the same, because it's basically the same platform, but they built really the best of breed. So it's interesting to hear that switch. That's curious. I'll have to start asking people if they're doing anything on TikTok, but it would not be a surprise me to see that. Yeah, um, I hope they fix it. So now you, you guys, are, this is kind of like, it's still a um, kind of an evenings and weekends type business for you guys, but how, like how, what's the results been? Like what sort of success have you guys had? Yeah, so so we grew, we've grown, you know, we did 400K or 500K in revenue in 2020. We did over a million last year. Um, we've made some adjustments to our business and we're now growing again in golf season at a more sustainable rate. Our turns way down right now. Um, but it's kind of getting difficult to manage just us, you know, four guys on nights and weekends, five guys, nights and weekends, with a couple contract help here and there. Um, so what we're doing is we're, we're actually, we launched a crowdfunding campaign equity for, for, um, uh, equity crowdfunding campaign. Okay. And uh, our objective is to raise up to $1 million. Um, uh, yeah. So, so, and what we'll do with that money is hopefully hire our first team, get some people full time. Um, it's amazing to us what, you know, we built a business to over a million in revenue on nights and weekends. Just got to imagine what we can do when we actually put some money into product development and uh, optimizing our website and, and uh, customer experience. So, um, that's what we're doing right now. So is the future just more of what you're doing? Are you focused on building, just adding more customers or is there something more to the brand? Like what's kind of the game plan with your, um, can't tell you everything. No, that's cool. No, you can tell kidding. me whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you know what? I think you're, I'm, oh, you're back. Okay. You froze for a sec. <laughs> it froze for a little bit. Um, you got me now. Yep. You're good. Okay. So, so uh question was what's yeah, the future look like yeah where, where do you want to take this so so i mean it's going to be similar in the sense that we've been you know i really believe in the lean startup method which i know you know many of your listeners are probably familiar, familiar with is this kind of idea of consistent iteration on the product learning and, and changing so i'm sure the future product that we have is going to be different um things that we're going towards are a more personalized experience so if you look at, um, you know, a company like Hims, they take you through a survey and they get you the perfect subscription for you. You know, if you uh, have hair loss or ED or whatever kind of men problems you have, that's Hims, and they have hers as well, which is a little different. Um, but they give you, you know, a different, you know, you might have a quarterly vitamins and a monthly medicine, things like that. I, I think that model might be closer to where we'll go. I can see that. You know, imagine golf balls monthly, polo quarterly, something that fits, you know, and, and maybe you're in Michigan, so you only get stuff in, in season. Um, 
Good point. <laughs> or a different box. Yeah. Or a winter box, maybe a skiing box. So we'll see. And we're, we're doing things. We're launching different brands right now is also worth mentioning. So we have a, uh, a brand called Coral, which has started out just golf clubs. Um, but we're going to be, we're working on some really cool stuff there, um, including things uh, in the apparel space and, uh, and ex accessory space in golf. So, um, you know, having your own brand, I think is, is critical for us to blow this thing up. I mean, so to speak, that's yeah. our, our vision is to obviously not just be a million dollar revenue company or, um, you know, we would just kind of keep running on nights, nights and weekends. So, uh, that's kind of where we, where we want to take it. I love it. All right. So if you could offer only one piece of advice to other founders, what would that be? I would say persistence is key. It's, uh, you know, I, I think that to be an entrepreneur, um, it's not necessarily, you know, planning perfectly. Nothing's a cakewalk. You know, you're, you're consistently putting out fires. And being an entrepreneur means you're going to go past the point that someone else will quit. Someone else is going to meet a challenge that, you know, maybe, you know, they, they invested $5,000, everything into it, and uh, didn't get a return right away. An entrepreneur is going to find a way to keep going and, and make it work. So my, my best advice to any aspiring entrepreneurs or entrepreneurs building a company is just don't quit. You know, you just got to keep at it and, and the challenges are going to what are, are essential, uh, essential component to your, your path to success. So just it's a matter of how you deal with those challenges. I love it. That's great advice. Uh, what role has community or partners been in your success? Huge, especially nights and weekends. Um, you know, you know, so I'm, it's taken it's taken a village, as they say. Um, so we've got a bunch of people that came in, it's all bootstrapped. So me and Rick, uh, throwing the name out, like I mentioned it before on this, but Rick's my initial co-founder. Um, and then another buddy named Mark came on. Um, as we grew, more people came in and I, and I, you know, they caught interest. And I said, if you want to join, we don't just need money, we need help. So people would maybe write us a check of $50,000 but then help us um, with five to 10 hours a week is, of work and be on our co-founding team. So that's kind of how we've gotten to a team of five now um, is everyone who has invested, invest time and um, as well as their skill set. So uh, those types of investing partners have been cr critical. Supplier partners have been critical. We've made some bad mistakes there. Um, some significant challenges to reference my, my prior point where, you know, um, you just got to make sure you work with the right people. It's, it's totally key. That, and that's part of our mantra here, which is, you know, that's why we call this form your own pack because it's mm -hmm. a tough game on two sides of the coin. Right. So I'm, I'm glad to hear the, the role of partners in particular in your success so far. Um, I want to be conscious of your time. Is there anything that we haven't touched on you think is really important or exciting to talk about? Um, man, I feel like we talked about a lot of exciting yeah. stuff. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, we had, so I've got the business side, I think we covered well. The crowdfunding, I, I would just iterate, I, you know, this is an opportunity. Um, this is a, we're crowdfunding now, we're at about $80,000. Um, 250 is the, the, you know, our minimum really was 50 on the website, but 250 is our, our initial kind of internal KPI because that's when we can really start to make our first hires. Okay. Um, yeah. You know, and, and I just, I want to iterate it. The reason we want to open this up to the public, and maybe there's a bigger point here, um, with this post iOS world that's hard to navigate, with ads being uncertain, with all the uncertainty in, in the world. Um, I think now more than ever, it's really important to build a community around your brand. And that's one of the reasons why we want to crowdfund. We want a ton of people invested in the business that can share in our success that ultimately will hopefully evangelize us, give us feedback. And, um, you know, I, I think advice for founders is, and, and uh, you know, people that are, are listening that maybe want to get involved is, is um, you know, just make sure you build a community around your brand. And uh, if you're interested, join our community. That is great advice and a great opportunity. Um, all right, so I'm going to wrap with two quick things. One is how do people get in touch with you? 
You can email me directly, um, drew at mollybox.com. Very simple. Um, yeah, happy. I, I answer all emails, so reach awesome. out. All right. So the final thing is when we have interesting founders or investors on the podcast, we like you to nominate another founder or investor. Uh, we typically talk to people that are starting some sort of scalable venture. Who would you like to nominate, Drew, as a future guest of the Form Your Own Pack podcast? On the spot, but I got someone. Okay. All right. I would <laughs> I actually referenced him earlier. Um, he's he's a chairman of the subscription box trade association. He sold his company um, called Gentleman's Box. Uh, oh. his name's Chris George. So Chris. happy to make an introduction. I'm sure he'd be happy to join the podcast. He he does a podcast himself. So oh, he does. Be good, okay, to, good to have on. Super. That is great. So Chris George, you have been nominated as a future guest. Drew, thank you for spending time with me and telling us about <laughs> Molly Box. Awesome. Thanks for having me on again. Really appreciate it. No problem. We look forward to following your journey.